Welcome back to Decked Out John Boats. We're going to learn more about the Pure Watercraft, the electric outboard that's putting boats on planes. It's brand new for the 2020 season, and Josh Thompson and Tanner Carson are running it. We're going to find out their thoughts, find out about this new technology. So I know that you're the first person, I think, in Georgia to have a pure watercraft. Is that right? I'm the first person in the southeast to have one. The closest guy from here would be the University of uh, Virginia, I believe. I think they got five. Gotcha. But, yeah, I'm the only one in the southeast that has one right now. Can't remember his name. I've been talking to one of the guys that is also doing the bait. Um, Curtis? It's Craig. Craig. Craig, that's it. Craig, yeah, Craig's got one too. Yeah, yeah I've been talking to him. Lake. They uh, they fish a massive lake up there, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they fish three three different lakes. They can't fish any more than that because there's something with, something with the water. They have to register their boats to that to them lakes, but they're huge lakes. I was talking to him. He said he makes about an eight or nine mile run one way to get to his spot. So yeah, that was my yeah. first first look. I mean, I saw the drone footage of him making that run. Holy cow! I mean. It's a, it's a long way. It's a big lake something. <laughs> so how is it that you got in with Pure Watercraft? I believe it was two years ago. Uh, I was trying to find something. I wanted to go fast on these lakes because I, I got sick and tired of going five miles an hour. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I had the Torquedo. The Torquedo worked great. There was nothing wrong with it, but it could only do so much. So I was looking to get a bigger boat, and I wanted a bigger motor. And the only thing I knew about at the time was the uh, Torquedo 10.0 and uh, the Elko. The Elko 20, really, because the 30s and the 50s hadn't come out yet. Right. So I, uh, I was looking at Torquedo, and man, it's just the, the Torquedos are they're good motors, but they're so expensive. And uh, so I, I was kind of debating, and Andy, Andy, which is the guy that owns the uh, tournaments, I mean, owns the. Uh, Pure Watercraft, he actually reached out to me somehow and uh, told me about the motor, and that's why I kind of got interested in it. And the amount of technology they put in these motors, I mean, it's that's kind of what got me. It's the battery pack that got me, really. I mean, because I was going to buy a Torquedo 10.0 and buy some uh, Tesla 24-volt batteries and put them together, but I saw too many YouTube videos and them things exploding, so right. I don't want to do that. I mean, it's, it, is, it is scary. I've, I've been looking for for lithium batteries that I could run 60 volts and, and most of them say you can run up to 48 and that's it. Y'all can, yeah, it's hard to find a battery pack. It's hard to find a good battery pack. And I couldn't, I couldn't find anything. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what I wanted to get. I seen the Elko come out and I was like, maybe that'll work, but it didn't really, it didn't really push it as fast as I would want it to. So I was like, man, I was going to find something else. And I got a bigger boat just specifically to get a bigger motor. But yeah, I've been in talk with them for, I think about two, two and a half years and finally got a system because they had, they haven't come out with production models yet. They're still in their beta, you know, beta testing. Right. And, uh, they finally, they were finally able to get a system and man, it's, it's been worth it. It has definitely been worth it. Yeah. I know. I know. I, I think the first time I talked to you on Facebook, when you found decked out John boats, you were talking about wanting to get a, a new boat, a bigger boat. Cause yeah. you were asking me about yeah, mine. Yeah. So you're doing the beta testing with, with pure watercraft and what does that what does that mean basically i got a guy his name's rick he he come down here drove all the way down here from washington and uh me and him put the motor on back got the batteries there going i got a uh, i guess a data logger that goes on to the throttle and every time i run it it you know records all the everything that happens in that system it records it and it, it's got known flaws but you know that's what this whole you know process is about and Basically, I'm just, they give me the motor to fish these tournaments and for me just to, to use it. So, yeah, I've, I have, I've been using, I've been using it a lot. So, <laughs> so I, it's something about playing it out on an electric lake. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I want to take a ride in your boat. boat. Oh. It's, it's crazy. I mean, I got to hold on. I mean, I've fallen off when he had the Torquedo. Because he said, are you ready? And I said, yeah. And he stomped it, and then he turned left, and I fell off the back. But now with this one, I mean, it goes 21 miles an hour. So, I mean, I got to 
I got to make sure I'm ready when, he's, when he wants to take off. I mean, it's, it's just crazy to be in a bass boat with a gas motor going. I used to go like 50 miles an hour, and now we're with electric outboard. We're going 21 miles an hour. I mean, that's I would have never thought that. Yeah, that's great. That, that we would come out with something like that. I mean, it's crazy. So as far as coming out of the hole, does it, does it, I mean, electric motors are known for torque. So yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure it's dependent on the prop, but how does that thing come out of the hole? I can get up on plane in about six seconds. So, it, and we actually got a high speed prop. It'll, you know, it'll be slower getting up on plane, but it'll add with this boat, it should add about four to five miles an hour <laughs> on top of the 21, 22 I'm going already. So. Which is almost as fast as my boat goes with the Ray, so. <laughs> yeah. So it, do you have to kind of roll into the throttle, or when you hammer it, you does it can, ramp up, or? No, you can. With uh, I run two battery packs on here. If you run one battery pack, because the battery packs I got, they're older battery packs, so they're not full capacity. So it doesn't have the capacity all at once to, you know, to, to hammer it down like that. So I run two battery packs, and I can. If you run one battery pack, yeah, you kind of got to ease into it and get up on plane, but I throw two in the back of here and ride all day. Well, I didn't know with all that torque if it would, you know, blow out or whatever no, you call no, it. No. Pro- have this boat's in. heavy enough where it, it won't do that. We, we tested Me and the, the rep from uh, Pure Watercraft were down here. We spent a whole day out here testing it, doing spent probably two hours doing that, just gunning it just to see what would happen and never had an issue with it. So, so you're going back to the torque, you know, is no, no, never again. <laughs> well, I mean, I was going to get the great motor, but no, I, way too. Slow. I don't know if I can go back slow again. I get the, I get that motor and put it on my boat. It'd be all right. You can, hey, I swap with you. You can get the Ray. <laughs> no, no, <can't> do <laughs> we talked about the motor. Is there any features on it that really stood out to you? Uh mainly it's the batteries. There, it's hard. It's hard finding a battery pack that size and that dense. Really, for the price it is, and it's it's extremely safe. Like uh, I know there's some, uh, like I said, I was going to run those Tesla battery packs, and the things are just way too dangerous. And I mean, these batteries are they come in a steel case. I mean, these things are they've been drop tested. They've been, I mean, these things have been put through it in their testing department. And I mean, this they're extremely safe, and that's what I wanted because I didn't want to put any Tesla batteries back here in the back of the boat. And, Tanner go flying through the air or something. So, <laughs> so I mean, I, the, the battery pack is really what sold me on it. So I know y'all run two battery packs, and y'all have had a chance to be at Hard Labor Creek and you know, on Harding, which is you know just a most people fish out of a bass boat, not an electric only boat. Um, yeah. Do y'all go through more than one of those battery packs in a day, or have y'all moved around enough to see what the the range on one of the battery packs is? We, at Hard Labor. Uh, I'm not sure what happened. I don't know if it was the, the weather. Or, I don't know what it was, but we didn't get that much range out of the two battery packs. I don't know if it didn't get charged up or whatnot. But we went to Lake Harding and we ran. I think we ran about over. Yeah, we probably ran six, maybe seven miles. Never had an issue. Then I went out yesterday with it. I went to Steel Branch, rode probably four or five miles, or not probably three or four miles at Steel Branch, and then uh, left there. Went to Lake Merriweather and rode around that lake a few times. And I brought it back home, and I was still at about 50% capacity. So, two batteries is will get you anywhere you need. So, one battery. I haven't ran it with one battery pack yet. But, so, so do, do both of them hook in at one time, or you have to to run one and it runs down and you, you hook the other one? Well, you can run parallel with each other. You right. can hook up. I think the guy that brought my motor down, I think he said he had five or six hooked up at one time. So, <laughs> I got two. I got an extra one in the garage, but nah, it's too much trouble putting things in and out of the boat. So. Two's plenty for any lake around here. Now, just from talking to the guys, are, are lithium batteries affected by the cold? Is that maybe what happened down it? It it may be. I don't think it gets cold enough down here to really affect them because they did have issues with that up in uh up in uh, I think Maryland. Craig did. Maryland. But they're actually putting a uh, some kind of thermal heater inside of these battery packs to you know combat that. But I, it, it could have been. I don't know. Like I said, these batteries are older. So there's no telling, really. Yeah, they, I mean, they've been used a lot. So. so we talked about the battery pack. Is there any other features of the motor that really sold you on the pure watercraft? I mean, the 22 miles an hour really kind of <laughs> did it. But uh, other than that, I mean, 
It's, it's a solid motor. It's, it, everything's built in house right there, so it's not like it, you know, it's based off a, a separate motor. Everything's built specifically for that motor. That battery pack is built for that motor. Everything in that motor is built, you know. It's not it, nothing. Nothing is really. I know like Elko. Nothing wrong with Elko. I just know Elko uses Yamaha. Right. And they put their stuff in it, but this one's all made, you know, as one. The motor in the Pure Watercraft is actually in the in line with the prop, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I guess all the other electronics, is that in the boat or is that in the head of the motor? It's in the head of the motor. Everything else is up there. So pretty much wires and a battery is all you put in the boat. The only, thing, the only thing coming out of the motor is my tilt and trim and the uh, plug for the battery. That's it. Are you getting any, uh, does that jack plate, I know that's one thing you asked me about my, about my boat is if the jack plate helps out when you're traveling yep. to that kind of speed, does that jack plate help you out? It does. I do. We put it on here and I noticed I need to lower it down just a little bit more because when I try to trim it up, I feel like it needs to come up, or the, the motor needs to trim up a little bit more, but it's cavitating. So I need to lower that jack plate down a little bit more, but I think the jack plate, yeah, the jack plate definitely helps. I, I never ran it without it, but just from going off, based off of what they told me, the jack plate definitely helps. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it gives you some more adjustment where if you just bolt that sucker to the boat, that's where it's at. Uh, all right, so let's move on to the boat. What kind of boat are you running it on? I got a 2010 uh, Bass Tracker 175 TXW. Uh, I bought it, I think, two Christmases ago. From a guy, I had a, he didn't want to separate the motor, but I got him to separate the motor, then bought just the boat and threw some new carpet in it, and it went downhill from there. I got everything else in here, too. <laughs> this boat and thing's an addiction, isn't it? It really is. I, it, it come a long way from a 1436 John boat, that's for sure. <laughs> I know. I, uh, I got into electric-only boats because... They were affordable, and I could do it with just a trolling motor. I didn't even know there was tournaments out there. Then I started yeah. tournament fishing, started buying bigger and bigger stuff, and then went to the big lakes. Then got tired of that and came back to the small lakes, and I bought an 18-foot boat. I bought batteries, Ray Electric, Power Pole, or uh, Talons. I mean, production, like I've gotten into the video stuff. Like, holy cow, I need to slow down a little bit. <laughs> I don't even want to add up what I have in this boat. I'm just going to just put that in the back of my mind. I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> just focus, focus on the fishing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If we lose, it ain't going to be because of us. <laughs> I mean, it ain't going to be because of the equipment. It's going to be because of us. Right. So. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, you know, back when I started, we didn't even have GPS, I don't think. I don't even think that was – like, I mean, you could buy the little handheld units at Bass Pro Shop and stuff and carry them with you, but as far as built into the – into the graphs, I don't think we had that. Now we've got, you know, huge graphs and electric motors that'll put boats on plane, and it's it's amazing to see how far it's come since since I could it's get out on my cool. own. Yeah. So talking to guys from Pure Watercraft, is there is there more? Like, are they going to be? Is there more improvements coming for that motor, or are they getting close to a final production? The motor, the motor itself is good. They're having issues. They're trying to get the battery perfected. They don't want to, obviously, they don't want to put a product out with known issues. They're trying to work on the battery packs a little bit here and there, and they're redesigning the throttle. So that throttle is a, is a real nice throttle. They're trying to thin it. They're trying to, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of a thick throttle. I think it's about two inches thick. Uh, so they're trying to slim that down a little bit, and they're going to have updates on that. You can download updates straight, you know, from your phone, and you'll be able to control the motor. You know, turn it on and off, and get vital information from from your phone. If you need wow. to. So they're just doing little stuff like that. I mean, they're real close. They're really close to being to being ready. So, so is it? So you said they're working on the batteries. That, that a lot of people don't know. There's a computer in lithium batteries that actually controls yeah. the battery cutoff, and you know, if it gets a certain temperature, does something. So that's what they're working on is the software inside the battery or the actual composition. It's the it? software. It's the software. Yeah, the software. They they haven't uh they did all their testing up in Washington and in Maryland and this I'm really the first one to have one down here in, in the heat and stuff. So uh you know that's kind of why they did that just to kind of test it out in different regions. But 
the better you're just the software. And like I said, the throttle, they're just redesigning the throttle. That's all they're doing there. So they're close. They're real close. So besides the jack plate and, you know, putting the battery packs in there, was there anything special you had to do to your boat to, to get it ready for that electric outboard? No, I think he'd come here. He uh, brought his van out here, backed up to my boat. It's got a winch. It's got a hoist in the van. We slapped the jack plate on, slapped the motor on, put the batteries up, plugged them up, turned the motor on, and it come right on. That was it. I mean, it was, it was simple. It was real easy. Do you know how much that motor weighs? The motor, I believe, weighs 98 pounds. The battery pack weighs 118. Dang. So <laughs> that motor is bigger and a whole lot lighter than that Torquedo with those AGM batteries for sure. Right. I think I, so, I run the uh, Trojan T1275s, 12, and I think they weigh 85 pounds a piece. Yeah, those are heavy. Got anything else with uh, about pure watercraft you want to share your boat? I mean, not with pure watercraft. I mean, if anybody's interested, just contact me or contact them. I mean, I mean, this is it's a good, it's a good motor. They're, they're they're a lot pricier than a the Torquedo or an Elko, but it's it's a lot bigger motor than a Torquedo or an Elko, so. It's definitely it's definitely worth it. It's a game changer because we found out uh, just fishing hard labor. We found out we had about two extra hours of fishing time just because we didn't have to spend it going back and forth to our spot. So I mean that's huge. That, right. that, that, that's huge. Not to mention you pretty much get to pick your spot. I mean, yeah, I mean you get yeah you get whatever you get spot. First is. We actually uh, at the Lake Harding tournament we actually fished another spot real quick. Uh, then we left there, passed everybody, and got to our spot we were originally going to go to first. So that helps out with that. So. Can't beat that. No, when, you get to, no. when you get to fish two spots first. Oh, yeah. Well, guys, I, I definitely appreciate your time. 